Secret four, assume your charitable authority. We need to assume our charitable authority. If there's no one to lead, no one will follow. If we don't lead our subjects for wrong, wrong will lead them. Our Lord says, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. And he also says, if you want to plunder the house, bind the strong man and you can have all of his goods. We are the shepherd. We are the strong man. We are the leader of our homes. We are called to establish charitable authority, the authority to love, the authority to lead in our homes. Fatherhood has a distinct role to lead, no matter what our world tells us. Okay? This does not deny the equal dignity among spouses. Think about this. The Trinity. The Father is a greater Father than the Son, yet they're equal dignity. The Son is a greater Son than the Father, yet they have equal dignity. I'm a father. I'm a greater father than my wife, who's a mother. And she's a greater mother than I'm a father. But our distinct roles as father is that we're called to set the pace of self-giving love, and we're called to exercise charitable authority over our family. Now, think about this. The flight to Egypt. Herod, after ascertaining the time of the Messiah's birth from the Magi, what does he do? He wants to send out a little greeting card and a little message to welcome the Christ child of the world, right? So he sends out his soldiers to kill him. Joseph, in the middle of the night, guided by the angel, takes the holy family and flees into a foreign land, exile, into Egypt, and he saves the family. This is an allegory for fatherhood. Herod is a symbol of Satan, who seeks to devour the child, as Revelation tells us. Joseph is a symbol of all fathers who are called to protect and establish charitable authority in order to save their children's lives, their souls. The night is the secretness, the hiddenness of fatherhood, which the world doesn't see, which actually accomplishes this in this world of exile, this Egypt. So we're called to be like Joseph. But who are the Herods of our world? The Herods of our world are the world, the flesh, the devil. And we can't really go into this, but we know the world tries to tell our children that their value is dependent on what others think of them rather than who God tells them they are. And so what do they do? They succumb to selling themselves out for a false value. The flesh, they consume and consume and consume and become consumed by what they consume. And then the devil, the poster child for rebellion, calls them to exercise rebellion. So we fathers, we're called to protect our children from this. Now, if if you're receiving water at your home from a municipal water facility that was laced with arsenic, would you drink from it? No. Would you buy meat from the local uh, grocery store that had botulism in it if you knew it? No. So why do we allow our children to receive the Herods of our time in such multiple fashion, such great fashion? Why? We need to be shepherds. You know, shepherds, after they herded their flocks in the, in a, you know, for the day, they would go back to the sheepfold. And the shepherd would lay his body down at the entryway of the, sheep, at the sheepfold. So if a predator came in to steal a sheep, it would be over his dead body. That's what we need to do as fathers. We need to lay down ourselves at the sheepfold gate, our domestic sanctuary, for our family to protect them. So where do these Herods come from? Basically, they come from TV, social media, and peer pressure. If they are deriving their value from any of these, we've got a problem. And so maybe we need to alter what we watch as fathers, our TV programming. Maybe we need to curb what they're watching. Maybe we need to watch shows together with them and then talk about it. Maybe we need to take the TVs out of all their bedrooms and put it in one main room, in a very public room, so we know what they're watching. Maybe we need to do that with the computers. Or maybe if they've got cell phones, maybe what we need to do is have them check them in at night with the parents before they go off sneaking off to their bed. We need to set boundaries and constraints because we think that at first it's going to hurt them, but really they're going to know we love them. We need to protect our children from the Herods of this world. This is very serious. My neighbor, they're they're a small family, very uh, discreet, very private, and they have this beautiful daughter, long flowing black hair, Asian complexion, just gorgeous. She's 16 years old. Her light on the second story floor would always shine out into the darkness of the night. You know, you see, see that light late at night. She'd be up. Well, on December 8th, the morning of, I noticed that there was police cars in front of their house. And uh, being a private family, I didn't want to ask too many questions, but I noticed the next day, that night, her light wasn't on. And the night after, her light wasn't on. And the night after, her light wasn't on. And I found out that this beautiful young woman, academically astute, committed suicide. I didn't know what to do, but I knew I needed to reach out to them. But how can you reach out to parents who their most tragic loss? So I bought some groceries, I bought some flowers, 
And I figured I'd just dump them off on the porch, knock on the door, give a little wave. And the mother, very private person, when I knocked on the door, she opened up the door and she just extended her arms and just waved me to come to her. No words. And she fell into my arms and began to sob and shake like a little baby. And then her fa- the father came in the room. And he fell into my other arm. And here these two grown human beings are shaking and sobbing in my arms, their face buried in my shoulders. And then the father, he steps back and he looks at me and he, he pierces me. And he says, Devin, hold on to your girls while you have them. Cherish them because time is fleeting. The world chews them up and spits them out. And what we see as a virtue, they see as a weakness. We need to protect our children. Joseph's four secret. We need to assume charitable authority to protect our children. 